Hey guys, sorry I'm not here, but we're still going to go through and finish your urban game. Um, so make sure you get your little map of your village from the sub. This is just going to kind of be a self-paced thing. So if y'all will just grab it and then make sure you turn it in after we are all finished, it will be good. Okay. All right. Let's make sure we're in the right spot. Okay. Here we go. All right, let's look at the working conditions in the factories. The two predominant factories are textile and iron. Working conditions in either of these two are appalling. Many workers contracted the deadly factory fever or white lung disease. Other workers were injured on the job in factory accidents. There were no protective railings around huge moving mechanical parts of machinery. Children, weakened from lack of proper sleep or diet, stumbled into the machinery and were mutilated. Women's long hair came undone and was caught in moving machinery. Regardless, if you were unable to work, you were fired. There was no health insurance. There was always a daily line of unemployed workers waiting to fill vacant jobs. Okay, working conditions are pretty bad. So what are we going to add? We are going to go add two hospitals and one more cemetery. Okay, so pause here. Go draw your stuff. And I'm going to keep going for y'all. All right, our next little Chauncey card says, the need for quicker and cheaper transportation is great. Coal, iron, finished products, and raw materials must all be transported from one area of England to another. In Ireland, in the late 1830s, a devastating potato famine drove hundreds of thousands of Irish to England and the United States. Bad for them, but cheap labor for you. Add one more railroad line. So you have the Irish coming in because of the, the potato famine. They're looking for work. Okay, they're trying to find um, something to do to help support their family. So your railroad line, guys, can be anywhere that you want it in your city. As we go through the Industrial Revolution, um, you're going to start to see reform um, movements pop up. Some of them are fairly straightforward. Some of them are a little bit more on the radical side, like socialism, okay? Um, that developed as a way to combat inequalities with the rich and the poor and the working class and all of that. Karl Marx believed in revolution, not reform. Okay, so him and Frederick Engels wrote the Communist Manifesto and in it, the proletariat or the workers, he felt the only way they could get rid of classes and the distinction between the working class and the middle and the upper class was through a revolution and they would need to rise up and overthrow their oppressors. But we'll look at that more later um, in the week when we talk about isms. Okay, our next Chauncey card. Due to a variety of factors, such as no land, no money, loss of family farms, you know, bad stuff like that. People start leaving the villages where their ancestors had lived for hundreds of years and move to the city looking for work to feed their families. By the thousands, they move to the bleak, uninviting cities. So, are we ready for this one? Because more and more people are moving to your city, you need to go add 20 houses, five tenements, two stores, a church, five more factories, a pub, and a nice house. You're welcome. Okay, second to last Chauncey card, guys. Oops, back, sorry, jumped ahead. All right, all is not lost. There are some advantages for many of the urban dwellers. City life is quite different from country life. For the small but growing middle class, a whole new cultural life is available. Museums, theaters, opera, restaurants, plays, and concerts are made available. Whereas before, only the aristocrats could afford the arts, now the middle class enjoy the fine life of culture and good living. Add two more theaters, or two theaters, sorry, and two schools. If you can't draw the mask, guys, you can just draw little circles with a happy face and a frowny face. Okay, but we have all of these things for people who have disposable income so that they can go and enjoy nice things in life. All is it lost, though, for our 
workers. Okay, we do start to see reforms, like I said earlier, and we see the rise of labor unions. Labor unions are formed to protect workers. They're trying to advocate for their rights, help them get better working conditions, more pay, fewer hours, guarantee jobs if they get hurt, things like that. But they're considered illegal by most governments because they see them as restricting trade. And it's not going to be good for the business owner if the people don't want to work. So then you have a lot of workers that end up going on strike. And that was the only way that they could push forward for these reforms. You also start to see child labor laws enacted during this time. So little Chauncey doesn't have to go work 18 hours a day. Okay. Maybe he only works 10 hours a day. And they also start to pass compulsory education laws for kids to make kids go to school so that they're not just going to be stuck in the cycle of having to constantly work. Okay. Our last Chauncey card. Guess what? Things aren't getting any better. There are no pollution controls, so the air in your community looks dark. Windows, walls, and even trees are covered with thick layers of soot. The river that once flowed through your quiet village for hundreds of years is now unfit for drinking, bathing, or laundry. A new disease begins to take the lives of people. Malignant tumors grow in people's bodies, and the term cancer is used in the medical profession for the first time. The average life expectancy of the poor class, which if you remember when we started used to be 40, is now 30 years of age. Your city is overcrowded and shrouded in factory smoke. The noise, loss of privacy, the loss of the family unit, all shatters the peace of the old ways. Suicide rates double, then triple. Add one cemetery, one jail, and one hospital to accommodate the victims of urban life. Okay, guys, so after this, you have pretty much made it through 100 years of industrialization. So this just kind of gives you an idea of what it's done to society. So once you're done with this, turn it in, get in Schoology, and then go answer the SAQ on the Industrial Revolution. This is one of the simplest SAQs I'm ever going to have you guys write, okay? Hope you enjoyed the game. If I can figure out how to do this.